for joining us today here at FFG. We're very excited. We're joined by a guest. We've got Scott, the miniature maniac. Hey over here joining us. He's local, mm -hmm. super excited. You've got your own channel. You've been doing stuff. We'll talk more about that later, but you've been doing stuff with minis forever, yeah. which is great yeah. because I need a lot of help with it. <laughs> and I'm also joined today by Mason Sklar, who is our marketing graphic designer. Mm -hmm. You've been with us for just over a year now, Almost. just about yeah. a year now. Yeah. That's right. Up on it. Nice. So yeah. Definitely more levels of expertise than I, Josh, have. <laughs> and that's my introduction, by the way. You got my name. It's Josh. That's me. Uh, so, yeah, we're clearly, we're going to be painting today. Scott's already going at it. He doesn't care about my intro because why no. would he? Uh, <laughs> more minis, man. I don't care about intros. Right. Exactly. models. <laughs> so, uh, before we get into the painting, though, and before we get into the live stream as a whole, I do want to let everybody know we are going to be doing a contest in just a couple weeks' time. So keep an eye on our socials. We're going to be giving out the Raiders of Bloodwood, which is a new book from Davide Mara and uh, Aconite Books. So we're super excited to do that. Like I said, watch our socials. You'll see all those updates, and then you can enter that contest and, yeah, maybe get something cool out of it. Cool. But for now, let's talk about our Descent Minis. So it was just the one-year anniversary of Descent launching. Mm -hmm. They are in my very humble opinion, the best minis we've ever done as a studio. I totally they agree. Are, they are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, I've been playing our miniatures games for quite some time now and won't name any of them specifically, but these are way better. Yeah, I mean, I'll go on record and say that they're the best board game miniatures that I've ever come across. Like, they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with GW figures in terms of casting quality. Um, they're very clearly cast in multiple parts and then assembled somewhere else, which just allows for more dynamic poses. But also, like the the crispy factor is is definitely up there. Like compared to like Simon and other large board game companies, like these models are just a, a league above the rest, easily. I appreciate that. We yeah, did not not pay not, not to, say to say that. It's, totally, <laughs> it's also totally the truth. Like you can go do your own comparison, but yeah, it's definitely the truth. Right. Yeah, I love them. Um, I'm terrified by them as Why somebody who does not paint much. Yeah. They're, they're terrifying to yeah. me because that's more detail than I've had to put on any other miniature that we've released too. Sure, yeah. But um, yeah, so I'm excited to paint them today though. Uh, I've got uh, a white over here and a wolf that I'm gonna maybe be working on, who knows? <laughs> I might make it halfway through one thing and then just ball up in the corner crying. <laughs> um, but yeah, why don't you tell us what you're working on today, Scott? Yeah, I believe I'm working on a Berserker from Descent, uh, the third edition, correct? Uh, or not third edition. Yeah, it's not the third edition. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm painting them with some purple skin. I, I, I worked on them a little bit yesterday in my own live stream. Uh, I okay. I I'd be able to finish them up in this stream. Uh, we'll nice. see if that actually happens, but I am going to try. All right. Well, I mean, we can drag this on if we need to. So <laughs> okay. You can finish all right. So it's all waiting on me. All right, <laughs> right. It's good. Good to know. <laughs> All right, and then Mason, you're already working on your suit. I feel like I'm already behind. What the heck? Uh, you know, different uh, different, different strokes of a miniature paintbrush for different there, folks. There you, hey, go. Hey, there you go. I like it. <laughs> I like yeah, it. I've, I've got here a, an Animus, and uh, I'm going uh, Descent box color scheme for his birthday. Oh, birthday Animus. Okay, okay. Yeah. So not the color of the Animus in the app. No, but definitely of, is reminiscent of that box. Is there going to be some bright orange on there too? There is. There's a There's some, if we can yeah, put over yeah. to our uh, little playset over there, you can see what. Hopefully, it'll look something like that. That is the plan, at least. Sometimes yeah. right. Out, right. Yeah, exactly. They're uh, what, what do they say about eyebrows? Uh, what cousins, not twins? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> I, I think he means like you're not going to nail them like to be symmetrical. Right. Yeah, right. So just really embrace yeah. the ugliness in yeah. a way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I get that. I have to do that in my daily life. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> you bad man. <laughs> All right, cool. So yeah, we're gonna be painting. Um, as we're going, we'll do some updates. We'll throw some things on the close-up camera so that you can kind of see where we're going. I know our setup isn't perfect for like a, a really nice like painting cam. We talked about moving some things, but that was gonna be a lot more work than we had time for. Mm -hmm. So. We'll maybe come up with something later after we talk to you and you tell us what we can do better in here <laughs> for our painting streams. It's super cool in here, by the way. As a, as a video geek and a mini painting geek, this is a really cool space to be in. So thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming. I'm glad that you joined. Yeah. 
So you said video geek in addition to Minis painting. So yeah. I know your channel is you, Minis everywhere, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Painting, all the fun stuff. Yeah, it's a celebration of the hobby at large because I love everything about mini painting. I love the culture, I love the tools, I love the process. I love the like the lore, I love everything. So yeah, it, it kind of reflects all of that stuff. Right, so how did you get into that initially? Like. Where, where was your background? Because you said you like video stuff. Is there a video yeah. in your background or is that just another hobby? Uh, just another hobby. I did some stuff with like wedding videography and like okay. stuff like that and like small businesses. Um, but mostly just uh, just hobby stuff. I had like another YouTube channel where I played video games. Um, nice. The the actual job I had was as a as a programmer, as a software engineer at a company called Cray that makes uh, supercomputers. But I hated that, and so <laughs> okay. I needed a different job, and so I made one. Nice, <laughs> nice. That's hey, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Not that I'm planning on going anywhere, <laughs> but I thought you were planning on going into supercomputers. <laughs> Me? Yeah. And the reverse of his Right? Oh, yeah, Maybe right. I should just, just, so <laughs> just happens. get yeah. out of the hobby yeah. industry. Yeah. <laughs> get into supercomputers. That's I, I, No, I'm too old for a change <laughs> like that in my life. Let's be honest. Well, that's that's very cool. And how long... So you've been doing your, your channel here, doing minis yeah. and hobbying. How long have you been doing that? Uh, I think six and a half years. So I started January 2016. So we're... Okay. All right, we're at six and a half at this point. Very cool. But yeah, I, I started the channel because I needed consistency in the hobby. Um, it was like really difficult to like paint every single day or paint every single week even. And I had like a, a massive commission that was like looming over my head that I like had uh, acquired from a, an agreement I made with a mutual friend like six years prior or something like that. <laughs> okay. But, um, and I just never got around to it. It kind of killed my interest in the hobby. And so I was like, I'm going to finish this so that I can like continue on enjoying my own personal hobby. Yeah. And so I started the YouTube channel as like a mechanism to like remind myself to paint like all the time. Um, and so the first couple of videos on my channel all had models from that commission. It was like a Blood Angel army. Okay. Um, but nice. you know, happy to say that that project worked. I finished that commission, and then it turned into like an actual job. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was that was that was the original intent of the channel was to be more consistent painting. Nice. Do you, it's your it was your motivation to finish off something else that just kind of took off. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That's legit. I mean, also there's a little bit of like ego in there like kind of just okay. having the thought where it's like yeah i can make a job out of this like <laughs> a lot of people might not have that that feeling but i knew if i was consistent with it that it would eventually work out because i'm a huge like youtube consumer so i have a pretty good idea what works on the platform i just apply that to my own channel nice, nice. yeah that's super cool yeah and now we're gonna steal all of your wonderful <laughs> ideas that's and okay and adapt them to our live streams. There you go. I mean, honestly, the more people that are making amazing content, the more the whole pyramid rises up. Mm -hmm, true. I'm never going to clutch my pearls when it comes to like how to make videos good or how to paint minis well, because if I, if I share it, that, that means that I have to stay on my game and get better and better. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. In the end, it's, it's all to benefit me, really. <laughs> right, right. Of course, of course. <laughs> Because you are the most important person to me in this room. Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> but hopefully to you as well. Wow, okay. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're all okay. <laughs> we can, they're just okay. All right. Man, they're all right. <laughs> <laughs> if Candace was here, I would have said something a little bit different, as she is my I boss. Remember but oh, okay. remember what? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> There's no video proof. <laughs> there is video proof. No. <laughs> well, very cool. So. As somebody who does miniatures painting, yeah. um, obviously anybody who knows me knows that I can just talk yeah. forever and ever and ever. Okay. Is there like, do you go into it like with some planned topics or do you just kind of riff? Because if I sat here silently painting for 45 minutes, Nobody's gonna be interested in that, right? <laughs> no, I mean, especially with no painting shots. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair, you got me on that one. Um, so are you saying like how, like how would you produce like a live stream, like what to talk about? Well, like yeah, that? like do you, yeah, yeah. do you plan things in advance, like before Some you go live or do you just kind of yeah. go? Yeah, I have a, I have a stream producer uh, that has topics Okay. Um, things like maybe giveaways during the stream, announcements about videos coming out soon, or, or talking about things like this. Like yesterday, I mentioned on my stream that I'm going to be here at Fantasy Flight doing a live stream. So I, those things to mention, but mostly I would call it a stream of consciousness, uh, like painting process. Yep. Mm -hmm. So like there are a lot of things that I'm thinking about while painting, and it's uh, just a matter of 
like trying to, I don't know, uh, describe that in a way that's like actually digestible for a live viewer. Sure. Um, so most of the time about painting, and then uh, I often go on tangents about topics that I like, talk about movies, talk about video games, things like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically like me. Yeah, yeah, but of course. I just, I never shut up about stuff, that's my problem. I mean, live streams <laughs> are like unedited, right? So it's like, it's an opportunity to kind of show people like, you know, maybe more personal side, right? Right, yeah, Talking about for those sure. kind of things are fun. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh, have I? I feel like I've used that, but I feel like I just <laughs> opened it for the first time as yeah. well. Yeah, so uh, stream of consciousness while painting. Yeah, here, I can, uh, I can talk a little bit about what the choices I'm making. Can He's, I do mine really quickly oh, first? Go for it, yeah. Because <laughs> it's going to be silent for the next five minutes. All There's right, nothing right, going right, on up right, here. Right, right. <laughs> all right. Can you see this shot, stream producer? Is that okay with that moment there? Good? All right, cool. So yeah, I, uh, I started painting this yesterday, and I began with like a loincloth, and I made it like a really pale tan yellow color. And I made that choice consciously because I, was, I knew I was going to paint the skin uh, purple. And purple is a, a hue contrast to yellow. And while I'm not using like, you know, daisy yellow, I'm using a, a muted version of mm -hmm. it, the skin still pops out from that fabric because of that hue contrast relationship. Um, so that, that, that's what I'm doing at the moment. And then I'm highlighting that purple skin by using a, a light blue color, um, which it's not really, I'm not doing that for any particular reason other than I know that it's fun to highlight purple with blue. It gives it a very uh, great cooling effect and it just looks nice. Um, so that's my current process right now, why I've made those choices. Okay. So you just said something that is different from things that I've been told, and maybe this is because of your level yeah. versus what people know my level is. Ask away, yeah. So I have been told while painting to start at, like, like they're getting dressed. Yeah. Always start at the lowest later, but you started with the cloth and then went to skin. So I, I will say that I was doing that because I was trying to paint something significant on my stream that wasn't as interesting as like the face because I, I was withholding the face for uh, for your stream. Got it. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, so I would normally start with the the most time consuming uh, detail on the model, which in this case I think would be the skin. Um, but yeah, I, I wanted to go with the one cloth for aforementioned reasons. Um, Fair. But in terms of like paint order and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I just tend to start with the, the biggest thing, um, whether it's armor, whether it's a, a cape, whether it's skin, um, it tends to work for me. But what do you mean by as if the model is getting dressed? Can you explain so, that? So, yeah, like the way that people have told me to do it is like you start with the lowest layer. So you start with the skin. Okay. Okay. So that you're not trying to paint, I guess you're painting the more raised areas after the fact. Yeah. And again, that could just be people who are talking to somebody who has no idea what they're doing. But then, you know, going from the skin. So like with this, I started with the beard because I didn't listen to what those people told me. <laughs> yeah. And I went, started with the top layer. Yeah. But like essentially it's start with the thing that's closest to the body and then go out to the farther layers. And why do you do that? I don't know. That's just no? what they've told me. Okay. So yeah. I'm... That's I've, fine. I've you... told people here before, I am not a minis painter. No, no. Like, I want to be. I would love to be good at it. You are painting minis. You're a mini painter. I... Full stop. Okay, yeah, fair, yeah. fair, yeah. fair. Yeah. So I would say that advice is really good. And I, but I think people in the hobby and people in general just need to ask the question, why? Mm -hmm. more, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because people will okay. say dumb things. So like, why? You... Tell me why. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Uh, it makes sense to paint the detail that is most recessed on the model because then later things that you're painting, you're not going to be reaching into the model and potentially glancing other parts right. you've already painted with a paintbrush. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, so that, that process of starting with the lowest area and, and moving up makes a lot of sense. Okay. But there's a lot of advice in the hobby that is bad. And when you kind of sit down and, and think about it, it's like, oh, that makes no sense. But <laughs> it, it sounds reasonable from the outset. So yeah, I want to encourage everyone who's here just to start asking the question, why more? Like really, especially of YouTubers, they make a lot of dumb claims. <laughs> Ask them why all the time. Okay, so here's my question though. Yeah, yeah. Or actually to follow up. Yeah. So have you, as somebody who's very good at what you do, been given terrible advice oh my God, on how to do it? And what are some of those examples? Yeah, well maybe not advice, but like uh, maybe like tips about the hobby and stuff like that. Okay. Like my favorite one to harp on all the time is people make a lot of silly comments about wet palettes. Like uh, you can't put metallic paint on a wet palette. The the Mika flakes or the sparkly uh, bits are gonna get into your other paints. Like they'll they'll go into the sponge and then invade some other paint. 
Which, okay. That sounds kind of reasonable, right? It's microscopic. It's tiny. Uh, sure. But it's like, do you, if you paint with like a white paint and a red paint, does that white paint become pink over time? No, I mean, it doesn't, it. right? And those those pigments are even smaller than metallic flakes. Right. So like, why would metallic paint do that? Something else is going on here. Like you are causing the problem. In some right. Ways. Um, so it's like th that. Those are the things I have to harp on a lot. A lot of wet palette advice I hear is just total garbage. Um, okay. Can't think of any at the moment. But that's probably the best advice or the best the best example. Right. So uh, I need to get a wet palette. Right. Well, well, I actually, we talked actually, about yeah, it. Yeah. You absolutely should not be painting. Oh, you have one. You're great. You're doing contrast paint. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but this doesn't matter. You're fine. You're what fine. What is that pain? Yeah. Oh, yeah. With I mean, the contrast. Well, actually, contrast paint. You aren't a real mini painter. You know, I'm, I'm taking hey, it back. You, <laughs> you're right. I'm not a mini painter. <laughs> I told kidding. you. That. I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, I would say a wet palette super helpful. Yeah. You need to know how to set it up, though. There are a little bit of quirks about it. Um, yeah. But yeah. I was just brushing up with your videos last night in yeah. preparation for this. Until last night, I was using freezer paper in my wet palette. Oh, nice. Guess what yeah. doesn't work in a wet palette? Not that. Yeah. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> yeah, you want that os osmosis effect of the water actually yeah. getting into the paint. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I did buy a wet palette, nice. picked one up, and then I painted up some stuff for another game. Not very well, but I painted it. And then I put my wet palette in the fridge, and I think it was in there for like three months. Yeah. <laughs> totally forgot it was in there. It got buried behind other things. So I don't even know where that thing is right now. <laughs> yeah. You know, I had a, I have this little carrying case that I brought here today, and I have a tiny wet palette that fits inside one of the cubbies in there. And I was going to bring that today to paint with because it just fits in the case that I carry. Yeah. Um, but I hadn't painted with it since Adepticon this year, which is earlier okay, in March. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was actual black mold in the sponge. Oh, no. And I was like, we're not going to use that. Yeah. <laughs> so I just brought the one that I always use. <laughs> well, we have some questions from the chat. Heck, yeah. So Let's hear it. Not, uh, what is the longest time you spent painting a single model, and what was it? Ooh. So I had an entry for Crystal Brush. Uh, which is a painting competition at Depticon that was a fully non-metallic metal gold armor set. And then it combined with a, a display base for her that was like a bridge and like water and a tree in the background. That process is probably like 150 hours, something like that. And it's a, it's a bigger figure too, so it's not a small one. It's a bigger model to take longer to paint because there's more to paint, right? Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can, you can really fuss over uh, blending for a very long time if you want to. Um, and I did for that particular situation. Right. I could, I mean, you could have played a couple video games oh, yeah. in that time easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely. Jeez. The next question we have is, when you first started the channel, what equipment did you have to invest in to get the quality of lighting, filming, and editing that you were happy with? Yeah. I started with a Canon T2i. I used one off eBay and a Nifty 50, which is a 50 millimeter prime. Very cheap use on uh, Craigslist as well. And for lighting, I grabbed a bunch of higher quality CFL bulbs and put them in China balls, which uh, also very cheap, um, very soft lighting. Um, and then for a backdrop, I made a, a frame out of PVC and I used felt from Joanne's fabric as black fabric, um, a couple can lights from Home Depot with more CFLs in it, maybe some gels on there to change the color. When I wanted to with some like cheap C47s or clothesline clips. Um, and yeah, that was it. That's probably everything I just said. If you bought it used, where I bought it, would probably cost you three hundred dollars to fifty somewhere oh, in there. It depends how good of a deal hound you are. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I had. Uh, and you're, you're really, I didn't really like wait for the gear either. I was like, I'm gonna make videos. What do I have? And then I just started making videos. And I had that gear because of my previous like uh, forays into like wedding photography and videography and stuff like that. So if you want to make videos right now and you have a cell phone, like get a book, lean the phone against the book, and like maybe kind of lean behind the phone so you can see it, and then just just get get footage. So just just do it, you know. Like if you're actually good at it, the the, the followers, the subscribers will come, the income will come, and then more gear will, will come. Never let gear stop you from doing what you want to do. So for me, I set up the phone. I angle it at my mini, yeah. and then I lose followers, yeah. and the income runs away screaming. Yeah, so, so you don't show them any No, no, I don't do that. We'll reverse the flow. We're working on reversing right. the flow. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, I know, like, the setup in here is bonkers compared to what I have. <laughs> but I'm sitting with like a webcam, which is less good than most cell phones. Do you live stream at home? Like when I, you're painting I do. Or, or no, not, not painting. No, more video game stuff. Cool. But like 
with that, I think I've got two lights and a microphone. That's wow. about it. So you you talking about your setup makes me feel a little bit sad about my setup, too. <laughs> well, I mean, I do it for a living, so that's okay. Fair, fair. <laughs> the best setup is the one you already have. Yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Someone in the chat pointing out we're all we've got a very uh, diverse brand spread of paints. Oh, all, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. I I mentioned that. Like, what are you using? I don't know. It's a armored Komodo, right? It's a uh, AK okay. Interactive. Okay. Uh, it's a third generation paint they just came out with recently. I'm still testing it at the moment, and it was just like the most compact like full range of paint that I could just grab off my shelf and bring with me. Got it. Um, and yeah, I, I'm not like you choosing it for any particular reason other than I'm just testing it right now. Okay, cool. Have you used their um, like uh, metallic color shift pigments? No, I haven't. Oh, it's, I'm mostly um, when I'm painting things, I'm more of an airbrush plastic model type guy. Yeah. So it's really good for that if you're looking for some very, um, very color shifty pigments. They have a nice range of those. Awesome, yeah. There's a lot of those coming out. I know mm -hmm. I have a, a set from Turbo Dork. Oh yeah, the, the, the paint, I've had good luck with some of those. Yeah? Cool. Yeah, I think uh, Blue Raspberry. Nice. That is a good name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was my favorite of theirs. <laughs> favorite flavor too. So yeah, like exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I haven't tried color shift stuff out yet. I feel like it needs the right subject, which is oh, like a, a model with like a lot of flat surface area maybe to see yeah. that color shift. Yeah. Maybe a vehicle or like a model kit, something like that. Yeah. yeah I haven't painted any of those yet. I, I'm gonna nod and smile, <laughs> pretend that I understand anything you guys were just talking about. And well, you've you know, got a bunch of airbrush paints over yeah, here. Yeah, because I am because, more of an airbrush painter. Right. It's very, very thin, but uh, yeah, it works for me. I mean, just move it a little bit forward. This is, I kind of brought a selection of ones I knew I was gonna use a little bit of, but I um, kind of started this with just sort of a almost a dip in speed paint of blue and then gray. I'm just kind of working up from dark to light. Josh, have you shown up your mini yet? No, <laughs> no, not yet. Leave me alone, Casey. Nobody asked for it. Did Did anybody ask for it? I don't think so. <laughs> I want to see it on stream. Yeah, I'm going to make them. Um, we got another question. So, Scott, why do you think <laughs> uh, your colors really pop, especially yellow? What's the question? Yeah. They're asking for a friend. Maybe painting something for them. Yeah. Okay. Um, to make colors pop, I mean, it's about finding the right paint. You want to find a paint that's saturated. You you can you can never make a, a color more saturated than uh, what is already in the pot. So starting from a good place is helpful, but that's not the only thing you can do. Uh, surrounding it in colors that complement it um, also helps the the color kind of leap off the model uh, at you. Um, you can also add in extra hues uh, if you wanted to say like where you were shading the yellow. Uh, if you glazed in a little bit of orange, uh, that would really kind of like make it more intense and more fiery. Um, you could even shade it with purple, which would desaturate it, but make all the highlights look really crazy and, and saturated. So it's, it's about having the right color in the first place, but it's also about surrounding it in uh, compliments um, to make it pop out more. Color context. Yeah, exactly. I'm also. using contrast paint. <laughs> and that's okay too, you know? Like, yeah. if you are a novice mini painter and you're like hearing me say all these like artsy fartsy things, and you're like, man, like I, I can't paint minis, I'm gonna give up. It's like, it doesn't matter. Like, you don't need to know this stuff to, to paint minis. Like, he's painting minis right now, and I'm assuming you're enjoying it, right? Oh, I'm having a blast. Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, he knows nothing. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't wanna pick on you. No, uh, I love it. Do you actually? Oh, I do. Josh I do. upon himself. I do. I ask for it. Right? I mean, Look at what I'm wearing Dude, today. Okay, I have, right? I have like, two piece cheetah tracksuit, so I should have worn that too. So match you, oh, it. that would have been spectacular. I didn't Next know. Time. The thing is, though, is that's two piece. Is this it one is piece? one. Hell yeah. Dude. This yeah. is one. All right. <laughs> yeah, my, um, so getting away from painting and streaming stuff, it was my little sister's birthday yesterday. Nice. And she asked for this for her birthday. So, we're going so out. That? We're going out for karaoke tonight. Okay. And this is what she asked for for her birthday, in addition to the largest jar of pickles that I can find. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why my sister is lovely but insane. <laughs> Runs in the family. Yeah. <laughs> 
And she'll never watch this, so I'm not worried about her <laughs> hearing any of that. Oh, yeah, sure. oh boy. Um, so when you were working on it, uh, do you choose I think I generally tend to prefer vibrant colors. Um, but you need both. Like you can't just paint in entirely vibrant colors because a model's gonna look too gaudy. <laughs> um, I would say, you know, pick one to two intense colors and then have a bunch of muted versions of those colors or just grays and blacks and browns and tans and, and stuff like that and whites to, uh, to go along with the scheme. Uh, and then use those saturated tones like, like wisely. Like I didn't paint this guy's uh, like tunic skirt thing the bright and vibrant purple. I painted his skin the bright and vibrant purple and then his, uh, his skirt a more tan and saturated color because I want to draw the attention to the things I care about the most, the face, the, the torso, the shoulders, things like that. So yeah, um, one to two colors, put them where it ma makes the most sense. Yeah. You just mentioned a word that had me shaking in my boots. What's that? Face. Face. <laughs> I have never painted a miniature's face. I just do it all one color, maybe do a little dab in the eyes and call it a day. Maybe just uh, stick to ones without faces. That's always an option too. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he has Smart a choice. Yeah. He's got a big old helmet on. I got. I mean, kind of a face. It's more skeletal. Yeah. So, should be all right with this. Faces just terrify me, though. You know, I kind of was in a similar boat, like maybe a little bit less than a year ago. Uh, that I was just like, whenever I painted a face, I didn't really have a grasp on what I was doing. I had like a general process that I followed, um, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until maybe like six or eight months ago that I really became confident in painting faces. And it was because I watched a bunch of makeup tutorials. Um, really? Yeah. So those those uh, people really know how to paint a face to make it look like beautiful, um, and they have tons of great advice. And so I just applied a lot of that advice to like my face painting, and uh, I picked up a couple like uh, tips that were super useful that I've like used like on every single model following that point. Nice. nice. That's super cool. Yeah, it's a little weird to watch makeup tutorials, but uh, you know, three or four, and you're you're, you're solid. Right, but it makes sense. Yeah. So going back to, oh, what was the name of that show? Face Off that I used to watch? Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe go back to watching that. Yeah. I do miss that show. Is that a makeup forward, like, uh, TV show? Yeah, it was it like was, a uh, special effects makeup yeah. competition. Oh, oh makeup. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. My uh, podcast co-host, John, mentioned that TV show, Face Off, a couple times. That sounds awesome, though. I love practical effects. Right? Any of those shows where it's just people who are really good at stuff, it's yeah. just fun to watch. Yeah, just, just watch them be good at things. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I get that. So how long have you guys both been painting minis for? <laughs> I haven't been painting mini, mini, like, you know, this is probably my, in my single digits still of, like, miniatures for a game, but yeah. I think... In 2020, I, I got an airbrush after building a lot of plastic models and thinking, I could I could paint these. Yeah. And yeah, I've been getting uh, very into that for a while now, and it's fun. What airbrush did you get? Um, last year or was it Christmas? My very nice girlfriend got me a Iwata Neo CN. Nice. Just kind of what seems to be the pretty. Uh, recommended middle of the road and it's definitely I got like before that I got like the cheapest one on Amazon yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, def to see like if, if it's something I was gonna stick with I'd upgrade of eventually and I yeah, upgraded yeah, yeah. eventually yeah that one was fine but uh, I found it was mostly like painted about to clean which is yeah, definitely a reason to upgrade yeah I get that. You know, uh, when I was really young, I wanted a fancy skateboard. My mom was mm -hmm. like, "You can if you can do 15 tricks on your bad Walmart skateboard, yeah, you can right. have a better one." Yeah. And I don't know if that's the best way to learn a new hobby, but I definitely have that stuck with me for a super long time. Yeah. So I appreciate that sentiment about wanting to get good before buying a, a better one. Yeah, compared to the, the opposite sentiment, I think people get to sometimes it's like, oh, I'll get the nice one, and that's like incentive for me to use it. Yeah, and yeah. For me, that doesn't work. 
Yeah, that's more like I'm more likely to be like, oh, that's the, I don't want to mess up my nice thing that I don't really know how to use as much. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather I'd rather start with the with the little bit of a lesser version or just you know cheap because money's unfortunately a factor. Yeah, I appreciate what you said. That doesn't work for me, which means that yeah. other people that might work for it. Like if you buy like a really nice set of weights at home, you might work oh, yeah. out more because of guilt and shame, yeah. which you should talk to your therapist about. Yeah. Um, but that works, and if it works, like, you know, maybe you should, you know, try it out. Yeah. Yeah, and for me, geez. Yeah, how long have you been painting? Uh, I mean, first mini I painted was probably about five years ago. That's when I bought all the P3. A uh, former coworker had formerly worked at Privateer Press. Okay. So he recommended all the P3 paints, picked up my first brush, and what was I painting? I think it was Imperial Assault stuff. Nice. Yeah, because I, I mean, still my favorite board game of all time. Were you uh, working for Fantasy Flight at that point? No, ago? no, that was okay, that so was back at my previous company, gig. And then you got a job. Here? Yeah, that's yeah. super cool. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I gamed with. We did Imperial Assault with my buddies like almost daily at lunch at my previous job, and then I started playing X Wing competitively. Oh yeah. So okay, funny story. My boss at Cray played X Wing competitively. <laughs> really? Does the name? Clint Dawson sound familiar? No, it's fine. I, I mean, what area? I was living in Washington at the oh, time, okay. it was so here. I didn't know the local okay. community here okay, very yeah. well. It was here. It was here. Okay. Um, cool though. That's super cool. Yeah. So I started getting into that, and then I mean, how I got my last job was loving the game, but not being good enough to play it, so yeah. wanting to run it. So yep, fell in love do. with this game. Uh, started reaching out to individuals so that I could, you know see if there were any openings and found one and got to run a couple X-Wing events before that all moved to Atomic Mass and yeah. But I've, I've probably painted a total of 10 minis okay. my entire life. This, this is one of them, he's not the worst, but that Varix is mine. It's awesome. all, all contrast This paint. guy? No, the Varix. That looks the, awesome. The dragon hybrid over here. Contrast is, is, is amazing, uh, how well it Right, it makes me look like I at least have some idea what's oh, going on. Like you, you made a grave error, though. What did I do? That, Tell me what I did. That base rim is sad. Oh, no, I know. It's not. Okay. Oh, it's not That's done? another thing. Come on. I have never finished a mini. Let's finish one right I will, now. I will yeah, paint a bunch. Get, okay, get I'm some, doing it. Get some black out. Paint that base rim. Just black? Yeah. Oh, I mean, like, you, whatever you color you want. What color, what color do I want? I mean, I, I use black. Some. All right. All the time. And nice satin black, not a matte one. So that Vallejo uh, one, perfect. Use that one and clean that base room up, you know? It's, it's kind of like the framing right. of an art piece, right? You don't mm -hmm. just like stick art up on a wall. You put it in the frame, make it look nice. No, no, I just stick it on the wall. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh yeah. I'm, I'm a maniac. <laughs> not a miniac, <laughs> but a maniac. Just, just, just regular up. I'm, I'm just psycho, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> While Josh is doing that, would you all mind showing off your painting? So far, the chat is interested to see how it's going so far. Oh, I haven't changed over much, but I will set. show what I've done with the face. Uh, you might need a, a super close-up to really see. But I've been just applying highlights to the face. This is a character that has a lot of detail on its face. He's really grimacing. Um, his cheekbones are super high and raised. Um, and there's lots of deep recesses. And so... What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to sink a dark purple color in all those recesses so that they pop out, like the ears pop out. He has a very clear forehead muscle and like a, a eyebrow arch muscle. I'm trying to enunciate all of those things. And then when I, I feel like I've gotten into a good place with like the detail, then I'll start like introducing highlighting and shading on various volumes on the face. Um, but yeah, just try, trying to carve out all the details at the moment. Yeah, not not a ton of progress. Yeah. And then, I mean, yeah, you can kind of you can see the before and after. I think on on this one that I'm working on now, I think I would like a little bit less orange peeking through. So I'd like to leave some areas more dark and craggy, and then um, kind of uh, be a, edit down the uh, the orange light leaks, as it were. I'm just kind of building up to lighter blues, and then I'm gonna start. Getting uh, some glowy in there. Yeah, fill in that glow. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And you, I mean, nobody wants it, but 
you gotta start acting like they do. Super boring so far. I want it. Not yeah. a whole lot going on yet. I That's like a lot of a lot of gray in the hair. That's all I got. Yeah, nice. And again, Keep it it's up. all contrast. Yeah. <laughs> Making my life super easy. Giving me that depth where I shouldn't have <laughs> that depth. So there, people saw the mini. No need for a poll, Casey. <laughs> It's brutal. See, I, I'm used to it. So you giving me grief over here, nothing new. It works. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I feel that. I feel like something about my personality invites ridicule sometimes. <laughs> and so I, I know what it's like to be on the end of that. Uh, yep. So yeah, I don't want to dull it out too much here. No, no, I can take it. All right, all right. I, I read the comments. <laughs> I can take it. <laughs> No matter how many times people tell me, don't read the comments. Oof. I have to do it. That was I'm a bit comment of a tumble, but it's actually totally fine. That actually, did you drop it? I did, but it, it's totally fine. Like, actually totally fine. You probably couldn't even tell. Just a little wetter right there? Yeah, just a little okay. wetter. Was, was nice save, me. Good job, Mason. <laughs> I knew you could do it. <laughs> Protect me from myself. Somebody's got to. <laughs> All right. We have some questions, oh, too. Okay, let's get to those. Um, they want to talk about painting faces. Is there any easier way for analysis to paint eyes? <laughs> Not like me. <laughs> <laughs> Big white blobs, tiny white dots look very cartoony. I think it's about order of operations. Mm. Um, uh, there's a lot of tips for... Uh, for painting faces, so let's, let's go over a couple. I think you need a sharp brush. You don't need a tiny brush, but any brush you have that can get sharp is what you need. Uh, I don't know if uh, we can get a close up of, of this, but like you want your brush to come to a razor sharp tip. Um, and then the other thing you can do to make it even better for your tip is you can, when it has paint in it, you can press it against your thumb like this. And then in one orientation, it's wide, and in the other orientation, it's sharp, like a like a dagger, like it's it's really sharp. Um, so that that uh, that sharpness allows you to sneak into areas you wouldn't otherwise be able to. Hmm. Um, if you're painting the eyes, uh, it also matters about how you hold the model. Your brush is you know it's long, right? And so you're going to want to uh, hold your model and your brush almost like perpendicular. So I'm holding the model like this in my hand, my brush is coming at it at an angle because like typically like the, the face kind of falls away and it gives you like a way to get into the eye, drop some like white and then, and then back out, right? So how you hold it matters. Uh, model oftentimes perpendicular to the brush, you know, some things are not humanoid but that's how it normally works. So then with the, with the black of the, the eye, like the pupil, I'll then rotate it and paint it with the brush parallel to how the model is standing. And oftentimes when I'm doing this, I'll get a little bit of black on the eyelid. Yeah. Not a huge issue. Um, when I finally have nailed the pupil and, and the eye whites, I can then come back in with skin tone and just cover that little bit of black up. Yeah. And I'm, I'm done. Um, so order operations matters. Like you don't want to do your skin first and then do the eyes because you're probably going to mess up the skin. So just like do some basic painting on the face, like maybe like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, and then do the eyes to completion in that order, and then work on the rest of the skin because um, you don't want to mess up a bunch of work you already did. Fair. Uh, there's also uh, something we talked about a little bit before the stream, uh, a tip that most people, I, I've never heard anybody give it, but eating your paintbrush. Okay. <laughs> Okay, it's not a real thing, but I, I do, I had to ask you this morning if you did it because every great painter that I know rinses their brush and just pops it right in their mouth. Yeah, you know, some people... It, just like that, just like that, it just happens. have artistic saliva, others don't, <laughs> which is really what separates us here at this table. It's, it's how good is your saliva. No, that's not it. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why people do that in the mini painting hobby. Um, one is we're painting very tiny canvases, so paint dries incredibly fast. Yeah. So if you want to put paint down and then wet blend or put paint down and then feather it out, there's almost not enough time to do this. To do that, wipe it off, and then get back to the model. It's like, I'm right here, the model's right here, my brush is right here, like done. Literally in like a, a <laughs> fraction of a second, and I can get right to whatever I, I was doing. So that, that's one thing, small canvases, dries really fast. 
The other thing is that accuracy matters a lot while painting minis because they're small. Um, and being able to do this just sharpens that brush every yep. single time. And it does it instantaneously. Um, I'm trying to figure out like a, a product that would allow you to do the same thing but not be gross. <laughs> um, I don't think it's gross necessarily. Way, it I is. just it, all right. it is, right? Like you're consuming paint that you shouldn't consume. Uh, at least like, you know, if you've been painting for a long time, I've been painting for twenty years. Right. Um, it's gotta have may, something. Maybe something bad's gonna happen to me over that, you know, that course <laughs> of time. So probably a good thing to avoid doing if possible. I'm just everything you just said, I heard. You have artistic saliva, and I know. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, yeah. yeah. It makes perfect sense to me. All right, yeah. <laughs> the mystery has been solved. Got it. <laughs> All right, there. I've got a, I've got a black rim, and now nice. I realize that I <laughs> missed some already. of the brown. Right. <laughs> Dang it. That just, yeah, I think that really completes it. That, that done. That, that's your first finished model, right? It, it really <laughs> would be yeah, yeah, right yeah. now. That's my first finished model. Many. You know, I, I mean, if you took that model and you showed someone who like wasn't necessarily familiar with the hobby of mini painting, what do you think they'd say? So, I actually talked about this. Like, I think this is actually okay. I would say this is all right. Absolutely. I call it good from far, but, but far from good. But not even. Like, if someone who had no idea what the mini painting hobby was or was unfamiliar, yeah. they looked at that, they'd be like, holy oh, cow. Sick lizard guy. How do you paint things so small? Like, <laughs> yeah. And that's actually kind of the beauty of, of the hobby is we kind of we get so in our own heads about like how we compare to other people who have been painting mm -hmm. for like so long that if you showed a normal bystander, they'd be blown away by that. Um, like absolutely. Um, so yeah. Well, I appreciate your kindness, and again, we're not paying him for this. No. <laughs> so this is all. I mean, yeah. I am personally. We as a company are not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm your life coach. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> your mini painting life coach specifically. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. Comparisons with theft of joy, as they say, absolutely. and. Uh, it's just fun to move the brush around and right. push paint. As right. simple as that. I mean, I do I do enjoy doing it. Especially like what we're doing today, right? Yeah. One of the last times that I had a good long mini painting session, it was a bunch of us who were gonna be doing a, a Blood Bowl league. And we were all just sitting and chilling and painting and it was that was super fun. Yeah. The painting was okay, but painting with a group made it so much better. Yeah, the social <laughs> setting. Right? Definitely, definitely helps. But that's also me. I, I <laughs> thrive with human interaction, so. Yeah. You're an extrovert? Oh my gosh. Yeah? I'm an extrovert stacked on top of a group of other <laughs> extroverts. <laughs> yeah. At karaoke night. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah. Yeah, I, I mean. I think I almost made Xander cry a couple times when we were at Gen Con. <laughs> just wouldn't leave just you alone. <laughs> well, no, just because it's like, okay, well, it's, you know, 9 30, 10 o'clock, and uh, we've only been awake since 6 o'clock this morning and in the hall since 7. Let's go do something. He's like, I'm going to bed. Yeah. Like, oh. There are people there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is at night, not, okay. Oh yeah, no, no, this is at night when we have been like on our feet, running around, sweating all day long, and I just get back to the hotel and I'm ready to go. I see people and I'm like, yeah, let's let's go talk, let's go hang out. And Santa's just like, leave me alone, I shut up. Right with you, Josh. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, right? Nah, I'm there with Xander. I need some time to, to watch YouTube videos and mm -hmm. talk to no one. <laughs> 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 Gotta catch up on the news. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Old man hobby. The news. Before I, before the, news the news. <laughs> Wait, yeah, Xander, come on. Come on. <laughs> no. Adult stuff. Adult stuff. I tried that once. Yeah. It kind of hurt, so I haven't done it again. <laughs> All right, back to this guy. I'm trying to figure out what colors to do next. He doesn't have a whole lot of skin showing on his legs. Okay. What color are his swords? He definitely they, gives me rusty sword. They're, they're definitely yeah, yeah. rusty. So how do I get a rusty sword? Uh, what color do I need? Or colors, combination thereof. I, I would say you need, you need brownses and oranges. Brownses and oranges. Is... Yeah. Um, and I might I might start, well, you could do it in a variety of ways. Do you have a metallic silver that you could use? I do Excellent. have metallic silver in here somewhere. I've got one right there. I literally brought.
I, I see things on my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll let Alex do that. After I cut in front of the camera, in my outfit. Wait, how did it come back on? What's that? Yeah. Okay, we'll yeah. talk later. <laughs> okay, so um, sorry, sorry for that. Uh, we we had a lot of very important um, business reasons that business had to happen, and you couldn't hear it. Um, or one of our cameras just completely died on us, one or the other. You you choose. <laughs> I do want to say though that we truly appreciated the comments. <laughs> <laughs> They were pretty spectacular. Yeah. We're just glad you're having fun. Right, right. Even though I was running around. And even Scott got up and was like trying to help us fix stuff because he's a video guy. You know yeah. what you're doing. <laughs> kind of, yeah. And I was crying in the corner. You know how I said I'd ball up and rock and cry in the corner? Yeah, that happened. But I think, I think we're in the clear now. Excellent. And I can't remember what we were talking about. <laughs> Me and Mace are talking about model kits and yeah. various, oh, yeah, yeah, various yeah. YouTube channels that we like that uh, yeah. that show off model kits. Boyle, Hobby, Plasmo mm -hmm. is one that I like. Night Shift Model is another Ooh, great yeah. one. Um, yeah, I love model kit uh, painters because um, it is for some reason those videos are always more entertaining for me to watch than mini painting videos. Um, so I watch a ton of them. I th yeah, this is kind of the, the opposite for me because I am doing more model kit painting. I like to watch miniature painting. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I like, like it's it's good to have interests that are like just outside of your own. That's how you ex expand. I think where you, things that are maybe you're not the biggest fan of, but people that are fans of things that you're a fan of are also a fan of. Yeah. That's how you get out there. And you're not you're not super familiar with it or good at it. So yeah. watching someone, it's, it's that thing we were talking about earlier. Someone mm -hmm. watch someone who's good at a hobby, you know, do oh, it. Oh, just cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So do I? Have you told him that it was you that suggested he be on it our was stream me. with us? Nice. Yeah, I was yeah. researching and I was like, hey. He's right here. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're talking about, like, oh, what's the budget for this? We've got to, like, fly him out, these people. We get into our studio. Yeah. No, we don't. No, nope, we've got somebody great. But I know you guys next do a lot with Sarastro, right? The YouTuber? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We've we've sent him some stuff in the past. I mean, I think, did, I think we sent him some Descent stuff, I but a lot so. of it was, like, our, you know, back when we were doing our other games before AMG took them over. He was doing some of that stuff as well, so. Cool, cool, yeah. Yeah. I like Strasher. He makes fantastic videos. He's mm -hmm. a good guy. His voice is just soothing, too. I know, and he, like, composes his own music for the videos. Oh, I didn't know that. I was yeah. not aware of that. Yeah. That's legit. Yeah. He's like, he, he, uh, I don't know if it's for sale or if it's for uh, free download, but you can download, like, his entire tracks, and they're great for, like, D&D &D sessions or just, uh -huh. like, long board game sessions because yeah. they're very atmospheric. Right, and also, yeah, like, for sure. He has fantasy ones. He has sci-fi ones. He has, like, more, like... Harry Potter theme, <laughs> kind of like uh, Halloween music. Mm -hmm. um, so he's got a lot of really good stuff. That's, cool. That's super cool. Yeah. Again, another way where people are just so much more impressive than me. <laughs> I mean, you're an extrovert, and to me, that's impressive. Yeah, there you, that, there you how, go. How you can get energy from being around people oh, is amazing to me. And COVID, COVID did a number on me oh, because man, yeah. I couldn't be around people. Yeah, that's no matter how hard I tried or how bad I wanted. Yes, I, I guess that is my gift. There it is. My gift is that I like people too much sometimes. <laughs> um, people were asking earlier in the chat if we could give a little, uh, I don't know, for a camera set up to give a little close-ups again. Are we... They, they would just like... Chat, you expect Are we too much zoomed in? <laughs> we're zoomed? All right. How could you go on the back? Oh, like where the guy uh, is? This model? Yeah. Okay, okay cool. cool. Thank you. So yeah, you want to do an update? Guy, yeah, I'll show you the. I'm getting some. Uh, a little bit of that glow started a little bit, so it kind of just looks a little watery and green, maybe. But that's the glow will be a little yellowy towards the edges and gets more intensely orange as it reaches the center. Nice, nice. And you two are over here, you know, working the whole time. <laughs> paint. Well, no, okay, you, know, you were up and trying to help us. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm over here getting behind. Like, oh, get out those browns and those oranges, and then we die. 
I'm just starting on my Browns. Scott, did you want to throw yours back in there? Is there yeah, sure, sure. any updates that the world needs to see? So I have increased the contrast in the face. I did the eyes in a saturated yellow, and now I've started to pick out some of the teeth in the mouth, and I'm going to do the tongue next. Um, and that will finish the face, and then I will move on to uh, the hair. The, the teeth and the tongue. Yeah. The things that I ignore completely on yeah. my knees. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can even see that. I don't know how close the close-up is, but yeah. Um, That's close. That's good. Nice. Thank you. Very cool. And I know we, we had some technical delays. So we're going to go a little bit longer than planned, but probably only another like 10 minutes. So we'll do one final update in about 10. Wow, time flies. I know. Time's, time's fun when you're having flies. <laughs> That's what that's what the frogs say. I'm sorry, that was real bad. That was real bad. Your I apologize to everyone. It started coming out of my mouth and I, I didn't stop it. I don't think I could at that point. It was already too late. Do you guys catch yourself not breathing sometimes when you're painting minis? Yeah. <laughs> no! Yeah. Oh, I never catch myself not breathing. Just in general. Just <laughs> period. Like, wait, I'm like, you know, <laughs> in like 30 minutes. Like, how am I alive? Yeah. It's all the time. Very, all the time. So just like when you're like so intensely focused, the rest yeah. of your body just shuts down. Yeah. Yeah. No, not so it's much. It's all visuals and just that little hand motion. I mean, it's, I think in a way it's intentional. I will stop breathing when yeah. I'm painting a like tooth. Control. You know? Yeah. Okay. For, for the control. I don't, I'm not actively thinking about it though. Got it. But when okay. I paint with other people and I'm sitting next to them and I like gasp for air. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, they're like, what are you doing? And it's like, oh, I forgot. I don't breathe yeah. while I'm painting an eyeball, you know? So I start making some weird like sleep apnea sort of weird stuff. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Watch that posture. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm fine. I'm just having fun. <laughs> so, a couple things that I've learned today then is to be better at painting minis. I need to stick my brush in my mouth yep. and stop breathing. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Understood. Not <laughs> medical advice. <laughs> this is getting dark. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think, you know, the day that I finally do stop breathing, I will paint <laughs> minis just as well as I do now. <laughs> But again, I have fun doing it, and that's what matters. Absolutely. Doesn't have to be pretty. I'm having a good time. Mm hmm Oh, man. There's no way. How the heck am I supposed to get out? Your leg is in the way, bud. Bud? Come on, bud. Yeah, I had to pick. How the I... heck am I supposed to get the back side of that sword? That's tricky. I mean, <laughs> you can get in there. I, well, the okay, thing is, I didn't ask how you would do it. I asked how I'm supposed to do it. The thing is, is because it's so obscured, it's hard to see. So it doesn't need to look pretty, you know? It just needs it just to. Just gets a brown. Yeah, 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 all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. That's people, that, that's a definitely a, a beginner thing that people kind of fall into. It's like, should I paint all my models in sub assemblies? And it's like, no, absolutely not. If it's hard to reach with a brush, like nine times out of ten, it's hard to see as well. Mm -hmm. and you're not going to be able to see it. So you get some mouth paint on there, you're good. Uh, painting in some assembly is just slows everything down so much. Uh, you paint so many things that are unnecessary to paint. All right. Even with that, it's still hard to get that stinking brush in there. You can do it, I agree. Okay. <laughs> good gravy. Yeah, our sculptors are really showing off on some of these with these sort of brush inaccessible areas that do look very cool though. Right? Yeah, I mean, oh man, and yeah, just uh, insider trading on our part. Some of the stuff that they've been working on for the upcoming stuff. <laughs> oh my god. It's it super cool. fancy. It's, yeah, it's just, it's just cool. And I can't wait to see how people are going to paint it up. Yeah. I know, we, we mentioned it on the live stream. Was that our Friday stream? Was Descent? Yeah, Friday stream. During Gen Con, we talk yeah. about Descent a little bit. And, man, like Mason said, we, we've been able to see some of those sculpts recently. They look so good. How was, uh, how was Gen Con for you guys? It was good. It was good. We had, in my opinion, the best game of TI that could have ever existed. <laughs> Sounds like. In the world. Um, 
what is Tia? Twilight Imperium. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. Our, the big one, right? Yeah, Twilight Imperium. Yep, the one that I've never played it, but I've seen it, and <sighs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it's bananas. So yeah. my first time ever playing that game was with a group of two other guys, so three-player game, and it took us five and a half hours, and they had both played it, and I play a lot of games, Yeah. right? So... I think we did pretty well finishing in five and a half hours. Are you like the kind of person that's okay spending five and a half hours playing a board game? I mean, I did, and yeah. that's the shortest game of TI I've ever played. Yeah. So but do you enjoy that? I do, okay. I do, okay. and like TI, unlike a lot of other games uh, that do take that long, you feel like you're interacting with it and with people the entire time. Yeah. Even when it's not your turn, you're like, hey, you know, you could attack me, but I could also hook you up with this if you don't. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Right? So there's, so there's, there's a there's lot some, of player interaction. There's some paw ticking going on. And like, we, I've had some great games of TI, <laughs> some super like thematic cool things happening, but this game at Gen Con, the final was just the biggest, best thing. And it's crazy that we had people that were there for three days of Gen Con, where they were in the event space, <laughs> yeah. in our space, before the exhibit hall opened and after the exhibit hall closed, which means that they had Sunday. To go through Gen Con. Right. Paid yeah. for a Gen Con ticket. Could only get into Gen Con one day. <laughs> and it's yeah, it's spectacular I, that I people that. love that game that much. Yeah. So there was a competition for TI? Yeah, yeah. We did a oh, tournament. Oh, wow. Yep. And getting back, sitting in front of the camera, and you said get browns and oranges. I was supposed to mix those, wasn't I? No, not really. No? Um, you can okay. if you want. Uh, so, you, so, yeah. so I did some brown. All right, get some oranges on there now. And you could. And know, how should I like dry brush? Kind of like stipple this on or wait? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So get like a maybe a well that brush is big enough because that sword is pretty big. Um, yeah. So get a little bit of paint on your brush and kind of just stab it on the on the model and then do that with uh, do that with both of these paints at the same time and then don't be afraid about doing it uh, while they're still drying. A little bit of mix on the model is okay and will give us more variety. Okay. Both at the same time. Yeah. Doing it. Uh, don't Probably load sure. up the brush too much. I would right. Yeah, yeah. 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 More say, like a dry brush, not, but not, not, not quite that dry. You ever heard the term overbrush? No. It's like dry brushing without wiping off as much paint. Okay. So like, yeah, you stab some, stab some uh, paint on that brush. Which one first? Doesn't matter. Is there? Okay. I wipe it off. On the, actually, yeah, get it pretty saturated with the. Wipe it off a little bit. And now, kind of just stab. Nice. There you go. More randomness. All right, get some of this. There you go. Yeah. Ooh, a little bit. Overdid it. Overdid it. Stab, stab around there to soften that a little bit. All right, wipe it off. Get some more orange. This is clear orange, by the way, not just normal orange, which is fine. Oh, sorry. No, do good. it again. Do it again. Do it again. Same side. Same side. Yep. Cool. All right, so that's kind of like your rusty base tone. That's, yeah. And now you'll apply some silver on top of that. Okay. And do the same thing everywhere else. Cool. Yeah. Ooh, I wouldn't want to get sliced by that. No, you <laughs> definitely need to check your tetanus booster after that. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can't keep away from fluorescence, so this or this orangey that I'm using is actually fluorescent red, and um, my my home detolfs have um, LED lighting that I sometimes just turn to blue because that makes things glow. And I oh just, wow! Cause I just gotta have those weird little gimmicks and stuff. Always metallic, always fluorescent. It's just fun to look at. Do you have a favorite fluorescent color? I do like the, this kind of fluorescent red the best. I, I would oh, like it if it was nice. a little more red than this orange, but it actually does. Like it's pretty handy for mixing stuff. It just really brings it to life. Yeah, I I love fluo uh, pink a mm -hmm. lot. Oh yeah, class. I was gonna paint this guy's eyes that color, but I uh, forgot to bring mine in. Fluo pink. Yeah. Te technically, that is how you read. Yeah, it's... What are you... I hear chuckling over there and then Josh's mini. We have a big fan. There is someone unsolicited who said, except 
excited to see Josh's model at the He's end. doing good Well, work. because I'm getting good training <laughs> over here. Well, All right. Or they're just so screwed. Or yeah, uh, I appreciate you, yeah. one nice person. Because they're not nice. Zach, you're awesome. Yep. <laughs> Let me see your mouse over. There he is so far. So now the silver that goes over that. Yeah. How light a coat is that to keep some of that color coming through? Like, how does that work? Uh, it depends. The look less at you. you he's the, the he's less, going to fix it. So now it's going to look do, real good. I'm going to tell you why I think it needs to be fixed. Maybe we can, we can even show it. All right, let's uh, do it. Before and after. And you could absolutely do this, but I'm just doing this for the sake of time. Uh, because I know we have like five minutes. Actually. Yeah, I mean, so we've got as long as we want, really. If we can get so this. Casey kicks me out. Yeah, mm -hmm. on the close-up. There's a large amount of like peach tan color right yeah. there. Yep. Um, and a lot of brown, and I want like more true orange color. Okay. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this clear orange from Vallejo, and I'm gonna apply it kind of like around that that area. Oh, is it one in the mouth? <laughs> I got, so you know it's gonna be good. <laughs> I got some orange on there, and now I'm kind of like spreading it around a bit. And I wanted to clean my brush off before doing that, and so the fast way to do that is just to eat it. Yeah, yeah, it's um, delicious. <laughs> it's not. It might not be. <laughs> yeah, don't do don't that. Don't listen to Josh. Um, so if we could go back to the close-up again, sorry, stream producer, I'm making you do a little bit of the camera musical chairs here. So I've reduced that from a more of a tan color, not more of an orange color. Right. And in my head, that maybe there's too much rust right here, and I want to see some more down there. Uh, so now I'll take that same clear color, and I'll just kind of like maybe like put it down just here. Dab a on the edges. Yeah, just kind of uh -huh. like even it out a smidge. And uh, yeah, so now with the silver, you get to you get to pick. Mm -hmm. um, the less you put on, the rustier it's going to look. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I would, if you're going to do it with a brush, I would say avoid recesses, go for edges. Edges are going to stay sharp. They're not going to have as much rust on them. Yep. Um, but the flats are going to stay rusty. The, the deep parts will stay rusty. Okay. But yeah, I might also just skip that silver and go straight to a bright silver. Like, uh, not, not even a dark one. We all you need is one layer. Do I have a bright silver? silver? Oh, you, you've got a bright silver. Mm hmm. But maybe I think I want to use my bright silver hey. because I need to know what my me. paints can do it, and mm -hmm. that it's not just the paints that are making me half decent, <laughs> quarter decent. <laughs> if only it worked that way, right? Yeah, if only I could buy skill. Hey, what are you talking about? I have contrast paints right here. Or like hey. a Looney Tunes, <laughs> you can get uh, like a checkered paint. That would be cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, what not? Yeah, like in Looney Tunes, where they have like a right. like a, a single roller. And yeah, yep. someday we're we're getting there. Three D printing and stuff. So edges here. This guy's got a bit of a forked tongue thing going on here. Ooh. Not, not a ton, but he's got quite a big gap in the middle of this thing. I'm just kind of filling in these cracks with this sort of creamsicle looking color right now. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> I haven't had lunch yet. Yeah. Creamsicle sounds great for lunch. <laughs> yeah. Needs Popsicle lunch. It's right? summertime. Right? <laughs> so hot. <laughs> Do a popsicle for lunch. Yeah. The, the artist. <laughs> I mean, it was orange. <laughs> Alright. So, this is what I should have done the entire stream is not actually tried to paint a mini. Just picked sections of things that I have no clue how to do, which is the whole mini, so maybe that sounds, would have been real bad. Sounds like painting a mini to me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Probably a real bad choice, but I made that decision. I'm gonna live with it. What decision? Uh, you just, just don't worry about it. You don't have to say it. <laughs> I don't want you to lose any amount of respect that you probably didn't already have for me. All right, so much respect for you. <laughs> so, do you ever find yourself starting over, uh, Scott, on a on a mini, like you know, from scratch? Like, you ever do you ever wipe uh, the whole model? Yeah, never, never. Um, 
I think while I'm painting, I will identify a part that isn't working and mm -hmm. I'll redo that part. But I've never like just wholesale yeah, strip the model. Working. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's important to kind of like paint a model and like assess it while you go, right? Yeah. So it's like, okay, this is working, this is working. You know, okay, something didn't happen. Something, something, you know, bad happened. Let's take a step back and try to fix that area. Mm -hmm. And also, I think in general, people just strip things too much, mm -hmm. probably. Um, like just from like a a quality point of view, like the the paint you're putting in our model most often isn't obscuring that much detail. Yeah. So you could just paint right over it and and get right back to painting instead of having to like wait. Yeah. For stripping. I feel like people often use stripping as an excuse to kind of like stop what they're doing and just reset and like come back to it tomorrow. Yeah. Or sometimes you need a mental break and some separation, but also sometimes I think you really need to press into a challenge. Mm -hmm. And so if you think something on the model isn't working, uh, I might uh, encourage you just to paint over it and instead of stripping it and wait until the next day or the next week or whatever it is, just like really just get right back into it. Um, don't, don't care too much about detail, just uh, get that model painted. Yeah. You have so many minis that you're going to paint in your life. The one that's currently in your hand isn't that important, uh, which is the sad truth. Yeah. Um, so just uh, finish it and then move on to the next one. And I will agree to that, unless it's Galadin. That is the most important mini I will ever paint in my life. <laughs> that's just for Jim Cartwright. <laughs> Can't do Jim is, is someone using uh, that your uh, Varix in your game right so now? So I, I typically will play either Varix... Or Cyrus, I, I was playing Cyrus more, which is why I painted Cyrus as well. Mm -hmm. But I've been playing Varix a lot more recently because we we just got a really cool tool where oh. whenever I hit with my Warbell, there's a chance that I just deal damage to every enemy on the board because it rings so loud. So I've been using a little bit of Varix. Um, yeah, and I... I couldn't do Jim wrong, so I was waiting to paint Galadin until last. I was gonna say. And I got less far with Galadin and then stopped. So since you finished painting your own guy, you used that's self care right there. You just did self care. Now right? you, you now every time you play you're gonna be using a finished nice model. Right. It does feel pretty good. It will feel good. There's a chance we'll play tomorrow too. I wanna play this game again so bad. Haven't had time because of Gen Con. All right, I'm good. feeling pretty good. Do we want to show things off one last time and then call it a day as I get well, silver paint all over? I can stop whenever. All right. Well, let's do it. All right, you first. One <laughs> last time. <laughs> Thanks. All right, so I feel like I kind of, I don't know. I feel like I overdid the middle of that blade. Yeah, probably got a little too little too heavy handed with that silver. Yeah, that's okay though. But started working on the edges. You got pretty good brush control, you know. Um, you kept uh, a that's, nice. That's a new compliment. Thank you. Yeah, you kept a nice <laughs> uh, like little line of, of brown there, and in in both areas. I think all it needs is a little bit more opacity, because like in the real world, silver is never like translucent. Uh, right. You know, so yeah, a little bit more. Uh, yep. did, did you thin a couple the other coats? Paint? I did not thin it. No, because you, you shouldn't have. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's right. What I yeah, that one would have been real thin. Oh, yeah. The yeah, airbrush? Yeah, no, yeah. no, no, yeah. no. And this is what a sponge would have helped with. Uh, it's very clear you painted this with a brush. Right. Um, and then the sponge would just give you more randomness, more yeah. tips and stuff. Yeah. All right. That's so, not a, not a bad, bad place to work from. That's what it looks like right now. And sort on the back. A little, little more. That white yellow green combo is actually pretty I mean obviously not very finished looking but like I like the combo it's it's not finished yet but yes um, so that's another thing you mentioned like your color combos and like color theory stuff not my forte no oh, if it looks good it looks good that's right. it right <laughs> yeah. if you like the colors they look good together that is color theory yeah all right, cool. Our theory is all trying to define what humans think looks good anyways, right? <laughs> right. It's, it's self-evident, so. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I do have to say, a little bit less, I thought they would look good together, and more, these are the contrast paints that I own. <laughs> right. Ah. All right, Mason. Well, oh, there it is. Up, yeah. yeah. You mind if I pop it off yeah, the little yeah, yeah, go for thing? It. Because yeah, it is yeah. taller. Yeah. So this was the original kind of... This is your concept, yeah. Right next to what's coming together as more your final product. Yeah, it's headed in that direction. Yeah, just, just got to be a little more glowy. 
uh, yeah, that's kind of that's how my, the one on the left was looking last night, kind of until I popped on another coat of that orange after it yeah. dried all the way, and I barely mix these colors. I'm kind of I'm pleasantly surprised at how close to the box lid they kind of actually are. That's super cool. Yeah. All Happy right. birthday, Descent. And then Scott, let's see it. Um, so I uh, finished up his tongue and his teeth. Um, I kind of went for a specular highlight on the tongue uh, because the tongue is often wet and moist and so it's kind of look a little bit glossier. Um, and then I started base coating the horns. This guy has lots of the horns coming out of his skin and so yeah. I started to, to base them with a, uh, an ochre color or a tan mm. color. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really fun model. I can't wait to finish it. Um, yeah. That's bananas. Thank you. You can pick it up. Uh, I, I will. I'll, I'll let the stream absorb the last bit of that yeah. before we go. But a lot of really that's... fun details and volumes on the model. Um, pretty, pretty enjoyable to paint. Nice. And then question, because uh, this is another thing, like do you do a wash over everything or do you do more highlights than you do washing to get those deeps or both? Yeah, it kind of depends so, on like m what effort level I'm planning on. Okay. Uh, a wash is great for like a one to two hour speed paint. Yeah. Um, this is turning more into like a four to five hour paint job. Okay. Um, and so generally speaking, I like the control that just normal acrylic paint offers over a wash. Okay. Um, a wash is great, but it is a little uh, unpredictable at times. Yeah. And I find that I'm often like cleaning up the effect of a wash <laughs> rather than just like painting it how I want in the first place. Cool. So yeah, uh, no washes on this model, uh, but uh, if you use them, that's totally fine. Okay, sweet. All right, well, Scott, thank you so much for joining us today. This was a pleasure. Sorry for the technical difficulties. <laughs> thank you for the help when that yeah, happened. You're welcome, yeah. And uh, thank you all for bearing with us. And continuing to create content with your comments. It was <laughs> it was pretty great. I, I had a lot of chuckling going on over here in the corner. So uh, yeah, yeah, thank you again, Mason as well for being here. Yeah, and nice. yeah, we actually tell people where they can find you. We should do that before we go. Oh yeah, yeah <laughs> sure. I think the best place to go is YouTube. Uh, my channel is uh, Miniac, and if you like the hobby of mini painting, I also have a podcast called Trapped Under Plastic. Uh, oh, both, yeah. <laughs> both places, great places to go to find content from me. Nice, cool. Well, thank you again, and we will see you all in a couple weeks to talk about Marvel Champions a little bit more. Mm. See you then. Thank you.